Hey, good morning, Hope Church. Great to see you again on this Sunday morning and to be with you and to share God's word with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's celebrate God's goodness. Even in the time of difficult circumstances in, and difficult situations, we can look up, find hope and joy in the Lord our God. And so I want to encourage you this morning to just seek God, allow his presence to come into your life and just enjoy God and allow him to bring you peace and strength during this time. We've had some great messages, some great sermons over the last few weeks from various people and I've been so encouraged and blessed and I'm so thankful for my church family and all those who have just spoken into our lives and so our church I hope you're encouraged, I hope you're blessed at this time and this morning I hope will be no different. I'm sitting down to preach this morning but please don't take that as a sign that I'm gonna speak forever. I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit shorter than normal this morning because I just want to share some thoughts to you rather than, than preach a sermon, just share some thoughts that have been on my heart. And I want to speak to you about understanding the times. And, I, and the passage I want to kind of build this message on this morning is 1 Chronicles 12, and especially verse 32, which we'll get to, to in a moment. But just to give you a little bit of background, when you read in 1 Chronicles 12, you'll read about David um, and the tribes of Israel defecting to David. Um, they were following Saul and then they decided to defect and follow David even though he hadn't become king yet. And that was a, a brave thing to do. It was a courageous move on behalf of those tribes of Israel because King Saul could have had them killed for that. They would have, they would have seen that as kind of treason. And so they could have been easily killed and executed. Um, but they recognised, some of the tribes of Israel recognised that David was God's chosen king, that, God, that God's anointing was upon him. And so the, the, the tribes were split and some continued with Saul, but others followed and joined David at a place called Hebron. And uh, they became what is known as David's mighty men. They became his army and they followed him into battle against Saul and they stood with him at a time of, uh, of unrest and a time of, of war. And so... When we're reading that story and it tells us about all the different tribes that joined David and how many of them there were, right in the middle of that, in verse 32 of 1 Chronicles 12, we have this. It talks about men of Issachar, the tribe of Issachar. And it says this, that they were, it says they were an unusual people, a peculiar people, because they had a peculiar ability. And it says, it says this is what it was. It says the men of Issachar, they were a people who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. That's an unusual ability to understand the times and the season they were in and exactly what to do. God had given these, this tribe, these men of Issachar, the ability to, and insight into the season they were in. Uh, they, had, they had insight into political matters, leadership matters. Um, they had insight into supernatural things and, and what God was doing at that time and who he was choosing and leading and using. And they knew that David was God's man and they knew this was a season of, of transformation and change in Israel's history and they knew that David was the man to follow, that God was using him and he was going to bring about change through him. And so they had this unusual insight and for David this was great because not only did he have mighty men who could follow into battle and fight and be people of valour, but he had men of discernment, men of insight and supernatural ability. And so my prayer is, God, give us that. Help us to stand and fight for what is right. Help us to stand and fight the good fight. But help us to know the times and seasons. Help us to have insight into the supernatural of what God is doing during this time. That's my prayer. God, give me wisdom, the wisdom of Issachar, the, the insight of the, of the sons and men of Issachar. Help us to have that kind of spirit so that we can prophetically know what God is going to do and speak into that and prepare for that. And so... As we look at this passage, uh, I just want to kind of break it down under two headings. Understanding the times and knowing what to do. As we look at the world we're in at the moment, over the last few months, we'll all agree that these are unusual times. The word is unprecedented. And no one could have foreseen this. No one could have known this was going to happen. And a few months ago, if you told me about this, I would have thought, you know, you were kind of you know, making it up, you you just perhaps uh, watch too many sci-fi films and I would never have believed it. 
you know, even now I feel like I'm going to wake up from a dream and turn to Helen and say, yeah, I had this bizarre dream that there was a pandemic and we went into lockdown and life had changed dramatically. If it, it feels like that, but the truth is it's very real. It's not a dream. It, has, it is a reality with real consequences. And so I think we have a duty to look at the times we are in and try and discern something of that through the wisdom of God and the spirit of God. You know, I remember a, a pastor once saying that every Christian should have a Bible in one hand and have a newspaper in the other. He said the newspaper will tell them what's going on in the world and the Bible will give them the answer to those needs and what to do. And I think that's great advice. I think we should be watching the news. We should be reading the newspaper, not perhaps not too much so we get overwhelms us and depresses us and we become obsessed with it. But we need to know what's going on and we need to look to God's word for the answer and for the wisdom to meet those needs that is going on in the world. We can't hide our heads or bury them in the sand. We, we can't uh, just pretend it's not happening. The world is a very different place to what it was a few months ago. Mar in March, when we went into lockdown, everything started to change. And it's not just uh, a local or even national pandemic. We know it's a global thing and affecting millions of people around the world. And so we want to understand of something of what's happening and what God is doing at this time. And so wisdom is what is needed. Now, what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do? But for me, I get on my knees and pray. Because when I don't understand what's going on, when I don't know what to do, there's one thing I do know. God has the answer. God knows all things. This may have taken us by surprise, but it certainly didn't take God by surprise. And it's certainly not going to hinder God's plans and purposes. He has an amazing way of turning that which is meant for evil and using it for good. He, he has an amazing way of weaving all of these things um, and making them fit his plans and purposes so that all things work together for good. We may not always be able to see that, understand that or comprehend that, and, uh, you know, Jesus' disciples, if you read the, gosp the Gospels, they were often confused at what Jesus was doing. They were often confused at the things he said. And um, we are very much like that today. We don't always know how God is working and what he's doing. And that's okay, but we, we must seek God and ask him for wisdom in what to do and to know the times we are in. Now, I want to share with you this morning... Um, a few observations that are obvious um, and that are obviously, you know, going on in the world today. There's, is, 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 it's not insight that is going to be profound, I don't think, but some things we need to look at, take seriously and address as Christians and as a church. And we need to be relevant to, to the world we live in right now and to our community and to the very real needs of people at the moment. And so as I was looking and thinking about this message that I was putting together, I just want to share a few things with you about the times that we're in. And, and at first of all, I just want to say that I, I think this is a time of uncertainty. And you may say, oh, that's obvious, but it really has an impact on people's lives because with uncertainty comes anxiety. And, you know, at the beginning, well, since last year, we've been dealing with Brexit um, it seemed to have gone on forever, but then they started the process of leaving the EU. And so at the beginning of this year, I think that brought a lot of anxiety with trade and travel and business and how that was going to look when we come out of the EU and we don't have the funding. And there was those who wanted to stay and those who wanted to leave. And so that was a time of uncertainty for many, many people. But then on top of that, if it wasn't enough, we in March we went into this pandemic and the coronavirus hit. And so that brought more anxiety and uncertainty for our families, for our friends, for our loved ones, for our children. It closed our schools, it closed the churches, it closed many places of mass gathering, it caused us to go into lockdown. The stress on the NHS and frontline workers and care workers is, has been incredible and they've done an incredible job, but it hasn't been without its price and without its cost that it's taken its toll on us uh, uh, as a people and as, uh, as a nation. And this is globally, it's, got, it's everywhere. And um, this has brought 
a lot of uncertainty again. People are worrying about the future of employment. They're worrying about the health. Um, it's devastated um, families. It's taken loved ones from us and left people lonely and grieving. It's, it's just been an awful, awful time. And so this is a time of incredible uncertainty that I'm asking God to help us to speak into. It's also a time of unrest. On top of all this, we had the horrendous murder of George Floyd. Many of you have seen the video where an officer of the law for over eight minutes knelt on the neck of George Floyd and murdered him. He took his life. And as I said in a previous video, it shocks and saddens me that people are still judged by the colour of their skin and are still treated differently because of the colour of their skin. That, that really does sadden me. Um, well, it, it, it more than saddens me, it appalls me that in this day and generation that racism is still rampant in many places. We would like to think that we're more civilised and there's more equality today, but obviously not. we haven't made as much progress as we, we thought. And so the death of George Floyd has highlighted that, and that has caused a lot of unrest amongst the black community. And, you know, the kind of, kind of phrase and slogan that they are kind of chanting at this moment is, take your knee off our necks. You know, they've had enough of the, in, of the injustice and the inequality and treatment that they are receiving just because of the colour of their skin, and rightfully so, rightfully so. And so this has caused unrest right around the world, and you've seen the protests, we've seen the riots, we've seen the violence, we've seen the, uh, we've, we've seen the statues being pulled down, we, we've seen the um, people kind of, uh, what's the word, Des destroying different monuments and defacing public property, uh, and it's only a small minority that are doing that. Um, and my con that's my concern, that the small minority will jump on the bandwagon and take away from the real cause of what many good people are trying to do, many good protesters, peaceful protesters are trying to do. That the small minority with their own agenda will jump on that and cause uh, more harm than good. And so through their violence and their vandalising of, of property. But, but I, I'm praying that even in all of this, things will start to change. That, that, that the, the black community will be heard. And that we as Christians will stand with them. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But it is a time of unrest. <clears throat> and we have to face that. And thirdly, it's a time of change. Our economy has changed. Our lives have changed. People's futures have changed with employment and finances. You know, the way we do in church, the fact that I'm speaking to you on a camera now, it, it shows the change that we have gone through. And so life probably will never be the same again. It will never be like it was before. Um, and I think we're kidding ourselves if we think everything's just going to return back to normal. The repercussions of this financially, economically, um, physically and health-wise uh, 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 are going to be incredible repercussions and, and have a, an incredible effect upon society. And so this is a time of change, whether we like it or not. You know, th th these past few months have changed everything. And so we have to deal with that. And so I want to kind of, in this message, say, you know, what do we need to do? In a time of uncertainty and rest and change, what as Christians and as the Church of God and as Hope Church do we need to do? Well, let me just suggest three things, and I, I, I certainly don't have all the answers. But I, I want to try and look at this and pray for me, pray for the leaders of our church, pray for the leaders of our nation and, and the churches in the Cana Valleys to know what to do. I think in a time of uncertainty, the first thing we've got to do is preach the gospel. Because one thing I know is that when everything is uncertain, we need to anchor ourselves to that which is stable and steadfast. We need to show that which is always certain. And the gospel is the message we need 
to share with people. I, we, we need to tell people the good news because one thing I'm certain of is that Jesus still loves people, he still wants to save people. He died for our sins and he rose again to give us new life. The, the, the gospel message is a, is a certainty, even in uncertain times. And people, um, people's worlds have been shaken right now. People are fearful, anxious, worried, and they're looking for answers and they're looking for hope. And I think this has caused people to perhaps spiritually consider, you know, maybe Christianity and the church has something to say about this and can speak into this, but maybe the Bible has some sort of answer for this. And so we have to share the gospel. When I say preach the gospel, I don't mean be preachy and in people's faces and confrontational. I mean just taking the good news to people and saying to them, yeah, things are uncertain, but God is a certain and a sure hope for you that in a time of instability you can anchor yourself in Jesus if you give your life to him and turn to him in faith then he can give you a hope and a confidence that even though everything is being shaken you you belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken you will have a faith and a life that cannot be shaken I spoke to I spoke about that I'm um, sorry I speak about I speak about that on Tuesday about an unshakable life and an unshakable faith but that's what we need to tell people. The gospel is good news and people need good news right now. Um, they, they, they're not believing what the politicians are saying. They're not believing what the government is telling us. They don't know which way to turn and which way to look. And so I think this is a unique opportunity for us to share the good news, to share the love of God and to tell people where they can find hope and comfort and strength at this time. And the gospel is, is transforming truth. It, 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 it may not change the circumstances around them, but it will change the, the hope that they have, the, 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 the way that they feel. It will change their hearts and their perspective and their lives. God can help them with their anxiety and their worries. He can help them face the future with confidence because we're more than flesh and blood. And, and there's more uh, to life than just what we see. There's another life to come, everlasting life. And so we can offer them incredible hope that is not wishful thinking, but a confident expectation of God's goodness. And people need that. They need that good news. So in a time of uncertainty, let's preach that which is certain and true and that which we can anchor ourselves on and stand on. And that is the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's be bold in that. Let's be courageous in that. Let's be wise in that. And let's do it with sensitivity and gentleness you know 1 peter 3 15 says always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the for the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect and please don't miss that last bit with gentleness and respect so let's always be ready always be prepared to give an answer when people say you know why aren't you panicking like we are why aren't you afraid like we are why aren't you discouraged or depressed like we are Let's say to them, because we have a hope that is greater than this world can offer. Our hope is not anchored in our economy or our finances or in, in, in the government or in anything like that. Our hope is anchored in Christ. He is sovereign. He is on the throne. And so we can face the future with confidence. It doesn't mean that things don't concern us, um, that things don't bother us. But we know at the end of it all, God is in control. So let's be prepared to do that and give people hope in uncertain times. Secondly, let us promote unity in times of unrest. Let us stand up and, and, and promote diversity. Let's celebrate diversity. Let's say to people, you know what? It's a, it's a wonderful thing, it's a beautiful thing that the world is made up of different nationalities, different people different colours, that the world is made up of the human race, only one race, the human race, but it is very diverse. And we're going to celebrate that uniqueness of individuality and people and groups. We're not going to fear people who are different. We're not going to fear uh, things that are different or, or you, know, you know, groups that are different or backgrounds that are different we're not going to fear those things because it doesn't fit our perception or our understanding or our mindset 
but actually we're going to celebrate those things. We're going to celebrate diversity. And we're going to, you know, proclaim that every person is made in the image of God and deserves respect, deserves equality, that deserves justice and to be treated fairly. And so we're going to stand for that. The Bible tells us what God requires of us in Micah 6, 8. He says to us, act justly, love mercy and walk humbly with our God. We have to stand for justice. We have to be a people who show mercy and walk humbly with our God. We can't turn a blind eye to what's going on. You know, the death of George Floyd was, was such an horrendous incident. And it should bother us, even though it might not affect us personally. It should bother us in, the, in this 21st century that these things go on, these things go on. And we need to stand with the black community and with our black friends and family and brothers and sisters in Christ and say, you know, this is not going to be tolerated. This injustice is not going to be tolerated. And we're going to stand with them and say, you know, we believe that for, for a better day, we believe that things have to change. You know, Martin Luther King said many, many, many years ago in his famous speech, I have a dream. And he had a dream for a day to come when black people will be judged by the content of their character and not the colour of their skin. You know, and it saddens me that that day still hasn't come yet. But that's what we want. We want that change. But for that change to happen, you know the saying, you have to be the change you want to see. And we have to. If we remain quiet, then we are siding with those that are racist and those who discriminate. Our silence still speaks volumes. But we have to stand up, not in a way that is aggressive, not in a way that is violent, not in a way that will do more harm than good to the cause, but, but we have to be a voice and we have to promote unity and equality and justice. And say, you know, God loves all people. The gospel is for the whosoever. Church is for the whosoever. And we're all made in the image of God and deserve respect. And we deserve to be treated fairly. So let's do that. Let's, let's remember what Paul said to the Galatian church in chapter 3 and verse 28. He said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one. One family, one people. And you know, heaven is going to be a diverse place. I hope you know that. I hope you realise that. Read the book of Revelation. It talks about heaven celebrating and praising and worshipping God. And it says they were from all tribes, all tongues, all people, all nations. They were, it's a diverse place. And the church should reflect that. The world should reflect that. Because it's an amazing, beautiful and wonderful thing. And so that's, that's how heaven looks, so that earth should look the same. And so when we get to heaven, it's going to be a very diverse place. And I, and I thank God for it. And so let's promote that unity, that we are one race, the human race. And thirdly, in times of change, let's prepare for the future. You know, it's not innovation that kills churches. It's tradition. It's been stuck in the past and doing the same thing that we know doesn't work, but we refuse to change. In a world that is changing, we have to change with it. In a world that is looks very different to what it did a few months ago, we have to ask ourselves, what do we need to prepare for? Because the needs going back to church life and going back into our communities is going to be different than it was a few months ago. There's going to be greater anxiety, greater problems, greater unemployment, greater financial pressures, um, greater uh, rise of mental illness, uh, and all of these kind of things. Life for many is going to be different. But we have to be prepared for that and, and ask God to help us to meet those needs and to come alongside those people who will need that in our communities. You know, church may look very different for a while. Even when lockdown is over, we may not be able to gather together as we did before for a long time. And so we have to be prepared for that. How do we do church with different 
um, restrictions in place. And so we have to think through that. And I've had a number of conversations with, with our leaders in Hope Church and other leaders as well. And so people are planning and thinking through how we can do that. But we have to be prepared. We know the saying, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. And we're fooling ourselves if we think that things haven't changed and that things are going to return to normal. No, there's going to be a new normal. And so we have to ask God to help us to be, you know, to be creative and to think outside the box and to not allow our traditions or, or our, our ways of doing things in the past to hinder us moving forward. We must never hinder progress because of preference. And so we may have to do things differently and think outside the box and be more creative. But God can help us to do that. And so the churches that usually struggle to survive or end up dying are usually the ones who fail to adapt, reinvent themselves and stay relevant. And we as Hope Church are not going to do that. You know, I'm, one thing I'm proud of about us as Hope Church is our ability to change and adapt. Our ability to embrace new things without uh, fallout or without um, division. We, we are able to grasp hold that, that, you know, that we need to do things new. We need to do things differently for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the, un, the unchurched and the unsaved and for the sake of the kingdom and to keep our church very much relevant and alive. So innovation is a great thing and we don't want to do new things for the sake of new things. We don't want to just jump on the bandwagon of different fads, but we do want to remain relevant and we do want to change in a world that is very much changing. We'll always preach the gospel. We'll always talk about Jesus Christ. We'll always worship, come around the word, take communion, love one another. All of that will always be the same. But the way we package it, the way we preach it, the way we promote it, the, how we how we show compassion to people, you know, the different ways of amplifying the gospel and making it heard may change. And we'll have to change to meet the needs of our community. And so in this message which I said was going to be short, but it's almost half an hour long again. Um, I just want to say to you, we do live in uncertain times. We do live in times of, unre that, that, uh, uh, times of unrest and change. But you know what? Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged because God is not, is unchanging. God is not, uh, has not abandoned us, has not left us. God has the answer. We as Christians at this time have an opportunity to show the world the confidence, the strength and the hope we have in Christ. That the gospel is real and his spirit living within us is real and what we believe is real and that Christianity makes a difference. And so I know this message in, in some ways have perhaps been a little bit bleak and uh, you might have found it a little bit discouraging in some, thing, in some ways, but the world we live in is a hurting place at the moment. But we have the answer. We have the cure for the cause. We have the healing for the brokenness in the world. And God can help us to do that. You know, I'm believing after all this is over that we're going to reap a harvest, that we're going to see God do something incredible, maybe even a move of God, a revival. Who knows? But I know, what I do know is God in dark times shines his light so brightly that in dark times he shows up and he does incredible things that's our god when when things look bleak god is at work and he's working all things together for good and so i'm not discouraged at this time i'm not fearful i'm not allowing myself to be anxious or afraid of what the future may hold because god is in control and so that is the hope and the confidence that we have as Christians let's strengthen our faith let's stay the course let's stand firm let's let's anchor ourselves in the word of God let's seek the wisdom of God and let us stand strong and be a testimony and a light to our world at this time they need courageous strong Christians who are willing to show how to live a confident, bold life in times of uncertainty and rest and change. 
and we can do that church oh church we can stand and be that beacon of light thanks for, for listening thanks for being patient i pray this will bless you and encourage you let's be sons of Isaac. let's understand the times and let's know what to do let's keep seeking god and asking him to give us insight god bless you have a great week guys no we're praying for you we love you and we'll see you soon